ありがとうございます。ソファン、メアハンドオブトゥユー、フォーソムコメンタリー、オン、イエスディ、インバスメント、インデータ、チャレンジス。Yeah, thank you very much for, for this、uh, um, introduction. Uh, uh, to give you a bit of context,、um, I'm CEO of c e s a m a French company of around 100 people that has been in business for eight years and that specializes in artificial intelligence for finance. Especially with the focus on、uh, ESG. So,、um, we work with some of the largest insurance companies in Japan, such as Tokyo Marine, Asset Management One, or Japan Post Insurance. And we have seen the rise of ESG investing in the past few years, especially in the past four years in、uh, Europe and in the US. And we see now this trend、uh, repercussing also in, uh, in uh, Asia and in Japan more specifically. The, the primary users of ESG that we, that we see are First, complying with regulation,、uh, that is the key priority for most asset managers, but also improving performance.、Uh, many quantitative teams are seeing ESG also as a way to、um, have new factors integrated、uh, that could、uh, qualify to generate alpha、uh, in investment funds.、Um, ESG is also used a lot in order to better manage risks in portfolio and finally to、uh, better analyze sustainable investment opportunities. So, a couple of the main use cases are detecting ESG controversies, so purely from the perspective of generating risk alerts, excluding assets that are not well rated in portfolios, or creating portfolios that contain best in class assets, meaning、uh, most sustainable assets. And、uh, finally, I want to mention that、uh, this trend is really global, so it's across both public assets, equities and bonds, and also across private equity. And we see、uh, private equity reacting very quickly to the ESG trend over. So now let's, let's、uh, discuss in more detail some of the key challenges of、uh, ESG、uh, data. Traditionally, ESG data is created by teams of analysts that are looking at individual companies, that are gathering data from each of the companies, and that are then reading the, the press in order to complement that information. Um, this approach is relevant, but it is、um, hard to scale and it presents some difficulties.、Um, traditional、uh, ESG ratings agencies are, for example, MSCI or Sustainalytics. The problem with a lot of traditional ratings is that they don't cover small companies very well. And this is one of the key data challenges currently in ESG is the lack of coverage. So it is very difficult to cover small caps, micro caps, and also private companies. In particular, in Asia, the coverage is very poor right now for ESG. And that means that many uh, uh, portfolio companies may not be covered by、uh, ESG ratings.、Um, in Japan specifically, even large companies are sometimes not covered by traditional ESG providers. So that creates a lot of data inefficiencies in the industry. Another key challenge that we see in ESG right now is、uh, the frequency of ESG ratings. So, oftentimes, ESG ratings are updated only one time per year or just a few times per year. And when ESG ratings are used for risk management, obviously the market is moving much more quickly than one time or a few times per year. In addition to that,、uh, we see that ESG ratings、uh, mostly take into account information that is reported by management and does not take as much into account information that is from outside of the company. For example, in the case of government scandals, such as fraud scandals, it is actually better to have information that is not reported by the company, but that also is, has an external point of view. La lastly, the, the last key challenge I want to mention in ESG data specifically, yeah, and one challenge that、um, I'm sure you are aware of in、uh, market data and fundamental data is that ESG data is oftentimes. Not point in time. So that means that you don't have a continuous data set that has not been modified over time.、Uh, ESG agencies tend to modify their ratings after the fact. And so that means that the rating that you will receive now for a data point in 2020 will not be the same that the rating that you would ha actually have received in 2020 point in time. That creates a lot of problems when you want to backtest data because you cannot reproduce. Actual historical results. So these are all of the key challenges that we have identified in ESG data currently. 
and uh, that are challenges in order to address the needs that we described. But there are actually some solutions that exist. And one of the key solutions right now that is emerging in ESG is the use of artificial intelligence. Um, in particular, what is called natural language processing, meaning text analysis. Um, what we do at CESAM and what some other providers do is detecting ESG risks and positive impact with regards to sustainability by analyzing automatically billions of articles and messages in real time. So as an example, we have 18 billion articles and messages from common news websites, uh, from uh, 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 social media, from blogs and forums, and from company reports. And we automatically detect ESG themes and risks and perform sentiment analysis in order to understand whether a company may be exposed to an ESG controversy or whether a company may have positive impact with regards to sustainability. And the advantage of AI in that context is that it solves a lot of the challenges that we discussed before. So it helps access higher frequency data. It helps cover small companies, private companies. It helps also find information that is independent that is public and that is not necessarily just reported by management. And it also is point in time information that is easily, that can easily be back tested. So uh, I, I'll, I'll mention a couple of use cases to illustrate them in more detail. But basically at CESAM, we create ESG data sets in order to track more than 90 different ESG risks and also the 17 sustainable development goals in order to uh, uh, precisely identify positive impact. And we do that on millions of companies, not just large public companies, but also small caps and also private companies. Some of the uh, use cases that I wanted to illustrate for that is using artificial intelligence in order to um, perform ESG monitoring using alerts. What that means is that we automatically generate ESG alerts on portfolios, for example, of equities or bonds on a daily basis, including portfolios of Japanese equities. And this data is then used by quantitative analysts and also fundamental managers to systematically exclude companies that are exposed to controversies in a portfolio. And this is a very efficient approach to systematically exclude companies that are not sustainable or that are exposed to scandal. Um, secondly, we help companies generate ESG signals by combining market data and ESG AI data to generate alpha. So basically we create long only and long short portfolios and we incorporate these ESG signals in order to uh, improve the alpha of these portfolios. The two last examples I wanted to mention, uh, one is positive impact so there is a specific framework called the UN SDGs for Sustainable Development Goals, which is well suited to automatically uh, detecting uh, positive impact actions by a company, such as implementing, for example, a new uh, net zero carbon policy. And we automatically track these announcements and these uh, positive actions that companies perform in order, again, to share this information in the form of alerts to help fundamental managers track the sustainability actions of their portfolio companies and automatically report on them without having to do manual research. The last use case I wanted to illustrate, and I'm, it's going to be my last point, is uh, due diligence in private equity. So this is not only applicable to public assets, but also to private assets. Um, as an example, we have uh, the Carlyle Group, a very large uh, uh, private equity company, in particular with their Japan the Japanese team, and we help them generate various kinds of analytics at the stage when they evaluate a company. And in particular, we help them monitor and track potential ESG risk and sustainability factors, uh, which are very important to assess potential um, uh, uh, private assets opportunities. And so this is uh, the last use case that I wanted to mention. And as you can see, there are many opportunities and a growing field in ESG uh, that, sh that started in Europe and came now to Asia. But there are also a lot of data challenges, which artificial intelligence can help solve in some cases, and which I illustrated with some examples. Thank you very much. Thank you, Philvon.